Welcome in the studio at TechCrunch. I'm Samil Shah. I'm here with John Lilly, partner at Greylock. He's an investor in Tumblr, Dropbox, ClearSlide, and former CEO of Mozilla. John, welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. So one of the big themes uh, you and your partners um, are looking at is the world of big data. Sure. And specifically, um, in reading some of your posts, and um, health data seems to be a big area you're interested in. Can you talk to us a little bit about why the focus on health, personal health data sure. in the frame of all this? Sure. I mean, I think uh, uh, data, I think what we're interested in, well, I guess, first of all, one of the guys we have at Greylock now is a guy named DJ Patel, who is the guy that, with Reed Hoffman, my partner and founder of LinkedIn, coined the term data scientist. So they created a data scientist group and at LinkedIn uh, a number of years ago. And they're just trying to figure out big data across across a, a number of sets of data, how do you drive insight? So people you may know started at, started at LinkedIn. That was the thing that DJ developed. And so DJ and I spent a lot of time looking at number one, how do you how do you build systems to collect data? How do you do that? You know, how do you how do you make sense of it? How do you drive insight? How do you drive you know create actions from it? Um, he and I personally are both interested in health data. Um, you know, I think one of the themes, one of the me meta themes, is that just by living now, uh, we all create data. Just by carrying your phone around, there's a company called Ginger IO out of MIT um, that just you know by carrying your phone around in your pocket, it can tell whether you're likely to have the flu or not. Mm. You know, very, very early in the cycle, just by this, by collecting information from all the sensors. Just by having a mobile phone, not other sensors or devices. No, no, and that, that's the point, is that mm. just the, this collection of personal information gives you some insight into what you're doing. And like, I'll, I'll wear my Zio or my Fitbit or my or my up, uh, bracelet or whatever, and that'll tell me what, what I'm doing. But correlated against lots and lots and lots of people, population health information, you get lots more insights. And so, I, you know, the, 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 there's two companies that I've invested in, seed investments. One's, one's a company called Massive Health, and they're doing you know, for food, so I, I, keep, I keep track of the food that I eat, and then, nor, you know, uh, um, compared against population, how, how healthy am I eating, that kind of stuff. Okay. There's another company called Hunter Plus, um, and they're trying to be, let you answer questions like, what did guys like me do to lose 10 pounds? And so they're, they're taking my personal information, mapping it against normative population information, and then driving insights from that combination. Got it. And so... In, in reading some of your writing, what it sounds like is happening is, okay, you can collect a lot of data from the phone, and now we have these devices coming in, whether they're connected devices or not, and eventually the, most of those devices will end up being wired, and the increase, you know, there'll just be a massive increase in sensors. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, like, someone's house or their you know, shoes, or will our shoes be wired? Things like this. Yeah, well, I think, I think we're just at the very beginning of this thing. It seems to me that I think the, the interesting sort of qualitative change that's uh, completely new is that we all are carrying around little computers all the time. So we're all carrying around a little bit of compute power, a little bit of sensors, and it's all kind of con continuously sinking back to the cloud. Right. So I, I think it's a good question. You know, I carry, until my up broke, um, I wore <laughs> my first couple until they broke, and I've got my Nike ordered. And I think that, you know, it's a little bit like people say, you know, the best camera is the one you have with you. Like, the best sensor is always the one you have with you. Mm -hmm. And so being able to have sensors, being able to have just telemetry in the environment that knows who you are and where you are. And this goes back to a project we worked on at Apple probably 15 years ago called Social Proxies. And Social Proxies was all about, you know, that your office and your computer were wired up so that people kind of knew where you were when you were there and you could interact that way. So I think that just this idea of electronics and the cloud knowing information about you uh, is, 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 is going to become more and more prevalent. Absolutely. You know, uh, in my house, I'm, I'm, I'm on the wait list for these Nest thermostats because it's another thing, like it's another, you know, aware sensor that will help interact with uh, the other set of things Got that you it. do. And so, and so another topic you drill into, which I think is really interesting, is, okay, so you've, you've got sensors on your shoes, you've got them around your wrist, your phone is helping sync that to wherever it's going, and you've got this mishmash of data, right? Yeah. And so what, what then happens? Yeah. Because you need context, you need some kind of frame, right? Yeah. And is, how, how do you, you know, where is that today and where do you see that going? Or what yeah. would you like to see as a consumer? Yeah, so I think this is actually interesting. So, you know, it's, um, and I go back to the lessons at Mozilla. When we were first starting to ramp our data team at Mozilla, we, before we didn't have any data. We didn't really know what was happening except for people were downloading the browser. And we had a data team and suddenly we had lots of data. We had downloads and rates and geographies and all this stuff. And it took us a while to figure out most of that data didn't matter. It was only a f two or three things that were the key drivers for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going to happen in personal health too, is it's great to see your, your steps and your calories and all this other stuff. My sense is that 
as we um, as all this stuff shakes out, we're going to realize that a bunch of this stuff's just noise, just exhaust. And it's two or three or four things, and the correlation between those two or three or four mm -hmm. things, that's going to drive insight and that's going to drive action. So now, the trick is, it might not be the same thing for you as it is for me, uh, and we, we still got to sort that out. So you're, you're saying, just to make sure I get that, you're saying that, okay, there's going to be all this exhaust, and that for different people, it could be my critical number could be the number of steps I take per day, whereas your critical number could be something totally different. Yeah, I think we're, well, I think we're emergent. So I think, I think for a while we're going to go through this phase where we instrument everything because we can. Like everything's going to be instrumented because there's like these little sensors and these RFIDs and all this other stuff. So right. we're just going to be like throwing off data. Mm -hmm. And so then I think what we need, the, the sec the, so the first step is the instrument. The second step is just to collect data and get it all together. Okay. The third step is what people call big data, which is to start making sense and correlation. So does what I ate last yesterday have anything to do with how I feel today or how I slept or whatever? And then the fourth step after that is to try to do population health to, to be normative, to see whether, you know, how you compare to other people. Got it. And so that, the way you describe that sounds like a number of years. It feels like it too, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and in terms of, you know, look, sitting where you are now as a, as, a v, as a venture capitalist investing in these things and obviously having a preference towards software, right? Um, more economies of scale, yeah. easier to iterate. Wait, what are you finding in terms of the, um, the connectivity between what the hardware people are doing, what the software people are doing, what's working, what's not working? Yeah, I think this is an interesting one. The, um, you know, m my sense is that we're going to see a number of hardware manufacturers, Jawbone and Nike and others, creating sensors. That's what they do. They've always done hardware. And there's going to be people that are trying to, to put together hardware, software, and social systems. Now, I think that's easy to say and really hard to do. Like mm -hmm. the number of companies in the world that have gotten hardware plus software exceedingly good, right. you know, it's basically Apple. Do you feel like the hardware makers, putting Apple aside, which is in its own class, should be building these platforms and then opening it up for developers to come in? Yeah, I think we're gonna see two we're gonna see two modes. One's okay. gonna be like Jawbone and Updo where you're saying come build on our platform. Like we'll give you APIs and come build on our platform. Then it'll be like Fitbit does, Fitbit and Zio, where they're saying, here's an open set of data, um, go plug into uh, RunKeeper or fit with a fitness graph or whatever and yeah. use the software system you like. My own point of view is that um, hardware manufacturers will try to build their own ecosystem. I think it will result in an ecosystem that's not as robust as, as software makers will, will do. So I think the, the winning model will be sensors that emit data and then to, a, to an open software platform like Fitness Keeper or something like that. Got it, got it. And in terms of what what you're seeing people working on and that's that's exciting you, wh where do you think, let's say to the software developers out there who are looking to start start learning this area or start plugging into these places, what, what kind of places would you encourage them to look? Yeah, I guess a, a, a couple things then. Um, one is I, I think that there are, there are going to be a lot of sensors that get built by companies. I would not focus on that. I would try to find all the sensors that kind of are spewing all this data exhaust. So um, the things that I'm in most interested in right now are collecting the data. So how do you sort of suck in all the data in real time uh, in a way that's meaningful? How do you um, uh, correlate data for a person? So in your own local database, how do you correlate you know, what I eat with what I, you know, uh, how I sleep with how I run? And then how do you do big data correlation across populations? And so I would I'd say those, those three parts are the things that I think are most interesting right now. Mm -hmm. And then I think that then obviously once you get that stuff, you, you end up with apps. And so you end up with apps that actually are affecting uh, sure. uh, behavior. And so this is a completely futuristic question, but do you think in three or five years when sounds like with the amount of activity, someone's going to figure this out, is it going to be like a stalwart like Apple, Nike, or is it going to be someone coming out of nowhere? Or is it going to be some kind of marriage of the two? Yeah, my guess is that the sensors are going to come from more established companies because it, you, you have these manufacturing systems that are hard to build, that kind of stuff. I think the software companies are going to come out of nowhere, and whether it's RunKeeper or, or someone else, I think it's a big deal. And obviously, we're not an investor in any of these companies, sure. uh, except for 100 plus and, and Massive. Sure. Um, I think that it's going to come from nowhere. Technology companies don't usually rot, jump from one technology wave to a new one. And the sensor-based you know, population health wave is a completely, looks a completely different animal than never came right. before. And so it sounds like the people who are building these softwares that are, these software systems that are going to come out of nowhere, you know, the, the, the bigger company should be looking out for or creating some kind of funnel to find those people. Yeah, I would. I think the, yeah. I think the sexy thing to focus on is that there's the thing we wear on our wrist, the thing we wear on our head, or the thing we put on our shoes. I think it's probably not where the money is. Interesting. All right. John, thanks for coming in. Yep. We'll be watching yep. the space. Yep. Thank you thanks very much. Yep.